I'm Gary, and this is Coasting with Culture. I like to combine theme park visits and riding roller coasters with various cultural experiences around the world. My visit to South America was in the final stretch in Argentina, which included attending a sporting event and a bit more exploring around the city of Buenos Aires. There was a plan to make another stop, but that would unfortunately be a missed opportunity due to a little bit of poor planning. Since I had completed my last planned coaster stop in Argentina, around Lujan, I had some time left in the evening to enjoy more of the local area. So I grabbed a train to make my way back to the Buenos Aires city center. Eventually, I made it to the Lanier's neighborhood, which is home to Jose Amalfitani Stadium. The stadium was hosting a super rugby match between the hometown Jaguares and the visiting Queensland Reds from Australia. This would be my second super rugby match after seeing the same Queensland Reds visit the DHL Stormers during my 2018 visit to South Africa at Cape Town's Newlands Rugby Stadium. Before the match began, there was FanFest, where fans could enjoy a variety of pre-game activities, from enjoying some beverages, to special inflatable games for the kids. But my interest was for what was about to take place in the stadium. This facility opened in 1951 and also serves as the home stadium of the Argentine professional soccer team Club Atlético Vélez Sarsfield. While there was only a portion of the 49,000 seats utilized for the rugby match, leading to some empty concourses, there was still a lot of excitement from those in attendance. I still don't fully understand the strategy of rugby, I did enjoy watching it again after having a better understanding of the general rules thanks to watching it in South Africa.
As the first half of the match concluded, the Reds were up 24-7. The halftime show looked like something out of Carnival with a full percussion band and a variety of dancers and outfits inspired by the popular event. The second half of the match ended up being a different story because the hometown Jaguarez began a major comeback. With the sound of the final horn, the Jaguars would take the win by a final score of 43 to 27, sending the local fans home happy. Although not everybody left right away. While rugby is an awesome sport with grit and determination, I certainly don't think I could do it. I think I'd get my ass handed to me by those guys. They are big, they're beefy, they're tough, but it's a lot of fun to watch. Now, I could go on and on about this match, but we'll see you in the morning. Yeah. 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 While it was neat to see the post-match party, this would prove to be a bit of a mistake the next morning. Originally, this last day before beginning the journey home was meant to be for a side trip out of Buenos Aires, taking a ferry across Rio de la Plata to Montevideo. 
for a day trip that would have made Uruguay the sixth different country of this South America trip. I was planning to see the likes of Fortaleza del Cerro, walk along La Rambla, watch some traditional candombe music, and of course, see if I could ride a coaster or two before catching the ferry back to Buenos Aires in the evening. Unfortunately, I had a bit of a setback the morning of this planned visit. So I'm walking in an area near the coast of Buenos Aires, near the Lujan River. And unfortunately, I made a mistake because I was scheduled to get onto a ferry to go to Uruguay today. And I was going to go to visit Montevideo for the day. 7.15 departure of the ferry. I woke up at 6.30 thinking I was going to have to ride up to the north end of the area closer to Tigre. In a panic, I get dressed. I get an Uber scheduled. Ride the Uber, get here with like two, three minutes to spare. And it turns out the ferry terminal that I was looking for was actually back closer to the city center. So I probably could have made it if I had known the correct ferry terminal. But unfortunately, my research showed me the wrong place. So now I'm walking back to the main part of the road. I'm gonna see if I can get an Uber to the right ferry terminal and see if I can get rescheduled so that I could still get to Uruguay today. Eventually, I did get back to the Airbnb to clean up, then walked over to the correct location for the ferry to see what the chances might be to catch a later crossing so that I could spend at least a couple hours in Montevideo. But after speaking with an agent, I wasn't feeling too good about this idea. So I got to the ticket counter, and unfortunately the ticket that I had purchased was non-refundable. When asking how much it would be to purchase a one-way ticket to get over to Montevideo, it was gonna be about the same price as what I paid for the round trip ticket. And so realistically, didn't seem like it would be worth it because on the original itinerary, I would have had the whole day to enjoy the city of Montevideo. By doing this other ticket, I would have had maybe three hours. And that probably would have been enough time to go to the park that I was hoping to get the coaster at and see maybe one thing and then head right back to the ferry terminal so uh, yeah not really worth it in my mind we'll save Uruguay for another time as far as today goes I guess we'll just use this as an opportunity to enjoy more of Buenos Aires so try to make the most out of a bad situation right indeed I did take the day to enjoy wandering around the city a bit more finding some of their landmarks like Obelisco, which was made in Cordoba back in 1937, as well as unique murals on some of the buildings. After chilling out back at the Airbnb for a while, I took a nighttime stroll along Avenida Corrientes, half of which becomes an incredibly popular pedestrian walkway at night. There are a lot of theaters found here, as if this might be their version of Broadway. This seemed to be the place to go, if you were hoping to enjoy one of many live performances. Or you could also enjoy one of the various street performers during your stroll as well. This may not have been the end of the trip that I was hoping for, but sometimes you have to make the most of it and hope that it can help you make better plans for your future travels. And that was the end of my time in Argentina. While it had its challenges, it was still an excellent time for enjoying some great culture, from the likes of strolling through the Mendoza city center, to the scenic drive beyond Cordoba, and seeing the famous Casa Rosa in Buenos Aires. It was also a lot of fun to find more coasters to ride at various venues, plus I got a kick out of the unique zombie show at Parque de la Costa. And I can't think of too many times riding a coaster while being chased by stray dogs. Thank you for following along with this visit to Argentina. I hope you'll come back for more, including one final vlog about South America that looks at the return home and a reflection on the overall adventure and various locations that were part of it. Thank you for watching this Coasting with Culture video. If you enjoyed it, 
please give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button below to see future videos here on YouTube like these ones which you may enjoy as well. Additional content can be found at coastingwithculture.com and you can also follow Coasting With Culture on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for announcements, previews, and updates. Thanks again for watching and until next time, take care and safe travels.